What is wrong with me? Uh. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're gonna make beer. I got yelled at for that. He talked. I was so mad. I really should have stayed home today. <laughs> Wipers, where would they be? Um, um this? Uh, no, it's back. What is wrong with me? Huh. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Duh. Here we go. Nice. a bit to find the uh, windshield wipers this morning. Morning from Hensel, Ontario. I'm gonna be in charge of taking wagons here all day, but I always make Mark do the uh, voyage run with me so I know kind of where I'm supposed to be because I get a little nervous and then I don't want to get myself locked in a corner where I have to back, try to back up two wagons, which I can't even back up one. These are our white beans. We started yesterday afternoon. Mark took a look at the weather and it was garbage, uh, so we panicked and we started taken off uh, we took off four wagons worth they were a bit on the wet side they're supposed to be 18 uh, percent this these these beans are for seed so uh, these guys will clean it bag it and uh, farmers will grow it next year so yeah white beans white beans are I could be wrong but I believe they would be like eventually you can put them in soups or um, used in like brown bean recipes and stuff like that so it's pretty amazing uh, these guys do a lot of edible bean contracts here in Hensel. Uh, Hensel is actually, fun fact, known as the bean capital of Ontario or something crazy. So anyway, long legacy of edible beans. A lot of farms were kind of established around this type of uh, crop. A lot of houses got built back in the day. And yeah, it was a real economic driver for Hensel. So it's a pretty cool little history. I love these little farm towns, uh, just knowing that farmers help kind of establish them. This is load one of, I don't know how many, we probably won't get at the rest of the field till after lunch. It's just too heavy of a dew. It's really cool. Cool mornings and uh, warm days. Okay, back where, uh, I had planned to be yesterday at this time of day, but um, when you're at the mercy of Mark and Mother Nature, you're, you're not in charge of your own life. I am going to tag my last two babies, and then I can actually go over some numbers with you guys, which I haven't even looked at yet, and I'm still a little bit shy to look at, but um, We'll get these guys done and then I'll maybe move these ewes that didn't lamb. I'll maybe get them out of here and open up these pens. And lambing will be officially done. Big. 
All right, we are on number, I can't remember. have been working on my numbers and I think I got it figured out. Ended up being 192 lambs born out of 92 ewes, which is about, I think it said 2.08 lambs per ewe. Stillborns, I was a bit uh, scared to look at just because we had those early preemies that were born um, and it ended up being 14 stillborns, so 7%. I think that's up a little bit from last lambing group, but still under 10%, which is Okay, now some of them I had five that were weak. If they die within that first 24 hours, you know, were they gonna make it? I'm not entirely sure, but there was five of them, so that's about 2%. And then I had late, one laid on, one unknown, one other, which is unknown as well, and one died of joint ill. So all of those died after 24 hours. Currently there's 169 with us out of the 192 born, 88%. Uh, that is 12% I think we lost. 52% were rams, 48% were ewes. Now I don't actually put the sex in of the ones that were stillborn, so that might have, it might end up being like 50-50 when we're all said and done. So yeah, not a, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, uh, but again, there's still room for improvement. The ones that are out there now look really quite good. And the timing was absolutely impeccable because the this second little group of lambs was born uh, right when we had all that rain. So I was able to be here, get those out. The last, the, the last ones born here actually didn't cause me a lot of problems. Usually they do. Uh, so everything kind of, it kind of worked out. <laughs> So this is the stuff, eh? We're gonna make beer. This is exciting. Mark just got back from Palmerston where he picked up some winter barley, malted barley, and what we're gonna do, we're actually collaborate, hopefully collaborating if we get this in the ground with River Road Brewery and we might be making beer. I think there's only like 13 acres or something. So we have a field, we just have a small field. We're gonna, we're gonna experiment with it. Uh, we found a place in our rotation that's going to work really, really well with our winter canola as well. So this is uh, yet another experiment and we'll keep you posted if it ever comes to fruition. We've always wanted to grow it and now uh, we found a place for it. been at this all day we finished our we are almost done we have one little corner field to do of our seed white beans which were kind of stressful because they have to be a certain moisture but they all were good I've taken two loads to town I'm gonna be taking this third set I think unless Mark 
is done combining and he'll come with me maybe. So it's been a bit of a day. Sorry, I can't, uh, I just can't film when I'm on the roads. It's, uh, it's really hectic and illegal. So uh, anyways, I will have lots of stories once I get a chance to actually sit and talk to you guys. He's coming my way. I'm not sure if I said it already or not, but we do not use the buggy in the white beans, especially these seed white beans. We don't want any damage to the seed coats. Um, and there's just a little more chance if you're running too much equipment on these beans. They're, they're just sensitive enough. We don't want any damage because then quality is compromised. So it's been a bit of a slower process, but honestly, I don't know how much the buggy would actually speed us up. I think I'd be sitting most of the time anyway. I think he's done so he's probably going to put his combine head on this header cart and we are going to move to a really tricky little corner field he's uh cursing growing white beans this year i don't think we'll be growing them next year not when there's only two of us Good morning. We are on the road again this morning. I have two loads I got to take into town and then our seed beans are done and sold. And then today, I think later we had a heavy dew this morning, almost fog. So I think we're going to try those commercial white beans, uh, likely after lunch and hopefully get those off. I think there's only 30 acres, so we should get that off. And then nose back into soys, hopefully. Today is not going as near as smoothly as yesterday morning. When I got into the yard here at the mill, there was a lineup. I was third in line. I always leave about like a, I don't even know, a quarter to a half a tractor distance between me and the guy in front of, because I have a loader. So I'm never really sure how much distance to leave. I got yelled at for that. A guy on a golf cart just comes around and directs traffic maybe, I don't know. So. I mean, he wasn't yelling, but he looked like he was yelling. I have my door shut, so I don't know. And he was doing a lot of hand gestures. So I'm like, okay. So then I was really nervous. And I've been really trying to be confident doing this job. This is, I'm way out of my comfort zone. I have always been the buggy driver. I like to stay in the field. I like to stay with Mark. I don't mind being my own mill person in my yard. So doing this at home, I have not a problem with. But when other people are like behind me in line, in front of me in line, I'm never really sure where to go. I have to really pay attention. And then I get yelled at. I don't know who he is. He's probably a very nice guy, but today it just made me nervous and it set the tone. So then I got to the next station and I have to wait at a traffic light. No one else in line, so it's just me. And he came over again he's like, you're not, your tractor's not on the trigger, like right at the line. And I'm, I'm literally at the same spot I was at all day yesterday and it worked fine. So I'm like, okay. And then I was just like close to tears. And then I got the weigh scale and the women there were, she, they're so lovely. So that was good. So that turned the tide a bit. I get to where I unloaded yesterday and they weren't set up. So there was some confusion there, but they got set up and the guy there was lovely too. All my pit guys, way girls, entrance lady, they've all been really nice. Um, and then we just plugged, we were at the very end of the wagon and we just plugged the uh, huge conveyor. <laughs> so anyway, now they're switching it out and I'm gonna have to go around for the third time and line up and unload literally two quarter wagon fulls. It's been quite a quite a morning already and I like don't want to do this job anymore. It just keeps getting better. Uh, we now have to move to a different bin because we can't get this auger out of the top of the bin because we blew the motor trying to de-plug the auger conveyor. Oh man. I really should have stayed home today. This is the uh, chaos behind us here. So what well, you can see, uh, this is this is the conveyor that's plugged. This is the one we want to put over here. But I think it's so full of beans, we've overheated the motor or wrecked the motor. I don't really know. And when I say we, it's not me. I'm just watching this all 
take place. Uh, so we can't move this guy out of the way for this conveyor. Drowning our sorrows by getting a box of Halloween candy way too early. I'm done taking loads to the one mill today. So now we are just nosing into our commercial whites. Mark's getting the uh, combine out and I've got the header cart behind me. And uh, we're gonna start on our commercial white beans now and they go to a different mill. The mill where we took our black beans last year. So we do spread a tend to market across three different mills. Just depends on contracts and who marks and who Mark talks to throughout the year to book these things. So I am once again on wagon duty and um, I'm very comfortable where I'm going. Uh, they have a nice, they have a pit system which uh, will be a lot quicker too for me coming and going. We're taking advantage of these days because we have three more nice days and then it's supposed to rain again. And I don't know from there to here <laughs> which seems easier than it was We are at dusk once again. I had no time to pick up the camera, but we are shipping now to Broadgrain. So this is just out of Seaforth. Uh, we took our black beans here last year and uh, I really quite like this mill. It's a little bit smaller than the one this morning, uh, so a little less chaotic. And, uh, and they have the pit, which is nice. So the wagons empty a lot faster. Um, yesterday and today at the other place we're using conveyors and they're just a little trickier. You have to run them a bit slower, so I'll I'll show you this place. There, it's just small, but does the trick. So I'm waiting for my place. We're gonna weigh in. They're gonna probe my wagons. And then I go around to the other side of this building. They give me a slip. I take the slip to way back at the back and that's where the pit is and my bins where these beans go. So yeah, and this is our last load. Yay! We got a line up. Got a truck there, truck there. I've got my babies behind me. There was another truck before this guy. So um, yeah, a bit of a lineup, which is good because it gave me time to figure out how to move my loader, which no one told me that this thing locks out because it worked fine last night. This is my loader joystick and it wouldn't work. So here, I'm moving it, it's locked out. And then I figured out, I googled it, because no one would answer their phone, um, and this is a hydraulic lock, so when you unlock it, this works. So there you go, I figured something out all on my own. I have a few minutes to just talk to you guys. Today uh, started out kind of nerve-wracking just at the other mill that I was at. And uh, anyway, what I forgot to tell you guys is my when I was weighing out on my last load, uh, there was a guy, there was a, a really nice guy driving, um, driving, I think it was maybe a fuel truck, I'm not sure what kind of a truck, but he was on the scales weighing in. And he jumps out of the truck and he came right up to the tractor door and he's like, hello, we watch your videos. And him and his wife are just from that local town and he just wanted to tell me he just wanted to introduce himself and and uh, tell me that him and his wife watched the video so it was it was cute he's like I recognize the vent so anyway if you're watching this thanks for watching the video and you made my day because uh, at t up to that point I was getting very discouraged and I just wanted to go home and then after that it cheered me right up I have no idea how long this is gonna be guys so I might just clock out now and see you guys in the morning hopefully Jess comes home tomorrow Jack we haven't really wanted to bother because he's got a really hard semester not saying Jess doesn't have a hard semester but this is Jack's last in-class semester so we didn't want to really overload him so much but 
hopefully the kids, uh, one or two of the kids can come home this weekend and, and uh, give us a hand. Not only that, I just want to see their face. Don't tell them I said that. Night, guys. See you in the morning. Well, it's once again golden hour. I'm terrible at vlogging while in the fields, but wow. These two guys get the sunset, which is nice. We have rocked this field. I cannot believe how much we got done today. So uh, Mark has not been happy with these soybeans. They're, we like to call lazy, so uh, lodged pretty bad. This particular variety of soybeans, we've had them before, they just like, they get a little sleepy. So when soybeans kind of lay down like that, you really have to watch. Um, someone, just, someone just went by with wagons, probably thought it was ridiculous. Uh, when you're trying to pick up soybeans low like that, you just have to be very cautious of stones and the dirt because the dirt gets in and then it can tag up the, the soybeans. And these are pretty fussy soybeans. They're the uh, uh, IP soybeans. So. We try pretty hard on quality. We're sitting at just about seven o'clock and I'll show you what, uh, when we know our day is getting limited. I don't know if you can see, like that's not fog, that's just the dust from his combine. And that, the stuff you see over there is from his last round. So that would have been like 10 minutes ago. So crazy. Good news, Jess is home. She just got home. It took her a little bit longer because she got halfway home, realized she forgot all her schoolwork at Guelph. So she had to turn around. Anyway, she was very upset with herself. You never really know how much you miss them until you see them after like two weeks. She's been gone for two weeks, I think. I think that's the last time I saw her. Hello, child. Hi. How was that drive twice? What? That was your Sock. drive twice. Sock. I'm so mad. Oh, rage. Oh.